Let your kingdom come. Good day, good evening, or whatever time you are joining us. Welcome to GET. Bienvenidos. Thank you for joining us today. We're so glad you made this your place to worship. Let's go right into the message for today. We are in for a good word. I'll see you after the message. We are concluding our reintroduction series. Today uh, is the conclusion of that. And I'm so glad the Lord gave our pastor this series because our family, our entire family has really been blessed from this series. And I pray you have been blessed as well. Today we will be uh, teaching and preaching from John, the 14th chapter uh, from the NLT version today. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's uh, letting them know that uh, I'm about to leave you. And it's interesting what he says here in the 27th verse of John, chapter 14, verse 27. You can follow along with your Bibles or devices, or you can just follow along with the screen in the back. But Jesus says these words, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give you is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. The topic we'll be talking about today is entitled, Please Meet Peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to preach this word to your people. Save souls, draw them to you. We thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Please meet peace. Please meet peace. And, and for the sake, because it is Sunday morning and feeling a little churchy, I got a subtitle. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what's your ETA? The other day, my wife and I, we went for a walk and left the house and got uh, not too far, but we, we got a little ways from the house and I realized I left something, something very valuable to me, something uh, that I needed to go back and get. So I told my wife, T, I said, hold on, hold on right here. And I ran back to the house, went in the house, got what I need to get, came back. And Tia's face was looking. She turned her head sideways and she was looking at me. She said, you could have left that stick home, baby. And I said, no, ma'am. I never walk without my walking stick. Anybody who knows me understands ever since a little boy, when I go out, and I walk, I have a stick because there's untrained dogs in there. And you're not going to hear of uh, Elder Sam getting bit by a dog. And you, you, you turn on social media and you see bobcats and mountain lions in the neighborhoods. And you're not going to hear about Elder Sam getting bit by a mountain lion. You're certainly not going to hear about Elder Sam uh, getting bit by a coyote. Every time when I walk, I always run into snakes. You are not going to hear Elder Sam getting bit by a snake. You know, uh, nowadays these raccoons are possessed and they be trying to bite your ankles. You are not going to hear Elder Sam being bit by a raccoon because I have my walking stick. But I don't consider my walking stick as a weapon. I consider my walking stick as an aid so my walk, so I can get through my walk safely. It's not by coincidence our pastor was led to initiate this reintroduction series by stimulating our minds and spiritual beings uh, to please meet Jesus the Christ. If you have not seen that first series, it's first Sunday, go back and look at that. I promise you it will bless your life. But it's only through Jesus that we're able to tap into the type of faith, the type of love, and the type of peace that we need as an aid to get through this journey called life. There's many different ways that we can go about obtaining more peace in our lives. Probably the most popular way is to go on vacation. Uh, pack your bags, get, you know, pack up your luggage, hit the airport, fly out to a beach with sand and, and uh, nice water, clear waters, and the sun is on you. Maybe you have a coconut drink with the umbrellas and some fruit on the side. Now, whatever in your cup, that's y'all business. I got nothing to do with that. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe you're a nature person. Maybe uh, getting into a cabin or or having a, a tent and the smell of the pine trees and, and the bark of the a tall redwood trees is what brings you peace. Maybe it's a ride up the coast. Maybe it's going out to dinner with your significant other. Uh, but whatever your outlet is to gain more peace in your life, I encourage you to keep doing that. It's good for you. However, this re reintroduction series today and the peace I'm speaking on today, you cannot get through a travel agent. The travel agent cannot add this type of peace with your vacation package. You cannot find this type of peace at a luxury five-star hotel. You cannot find this peace at a, a fine dining restaurant. But this type of peace, you can only find through Jesus Christ. This type of peace is the type of peace that he can give you and keep your mind when you're ready to give up, when your mind is ready to walk away from it all and you're just ready to settle for whatever because you're over it. It's this type of peace that you'll find in Jesus. I need somebody, anybody with breath in your mouth, if you would be so kind just to scream out, thank you, God, for your peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In chapter 14, when you read chapter 14, it's broken up into two parts. The first part, Jesus is teaching his disciples that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. Our pastor did an excellent job on that first Sunday. This second part is what we're teaching on today. And it's Jesus making a promise to his disciples that he's going to leave a helper when he leaves them. And that helper is the Holy Spirit. Verse, four, verse 15 lets us know, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him and does not recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. You see, Jesus is clearly expressing to his disciples that even though what's coming on Jesus' way, what's coming to him, he's more worried about their survival. Jesus says, I'm going to leave you some help so you can get through tough times. And I'm going to leave you some help so you can be successful. What's coming to Jesus is a lot of pain. And it's death. But Jesus still has a heart to give something to somebody else. One of the best actors to ever, uh, uh, one of the best actors to ever hit the big screen uh, says something so profound, and I would like to share it with you. Uh, Denzel Washington says, and I quote, at the end, it's not about what you have or even what you accomplished. It's about who you've lifted up and who you've made better. And it's about you giving back, end quote. It's interesting because when you look at both these two parts in chapter 14, you find nothing negative on the words of Jesus. Everything he tells his disciples is 100% positive, preparing them for what's to come. You see, some of us, and I'll be the first one with my, with my hand up, built in a way where we want to know the bad news first. If, I, if you got some good news or bad news, tell me the bad news first. I want to know so what we can problem solve, so we can come, with, come up with solutions. I don't want to be blindsided. If somebody's waiting outside that door with a bat, please let me know so I can clock back in and walk out there and regulate. Don't let me get blindsided. Don't let me get side uh, hit and, and, and snuffed without looking. I want to know. Tell me so I can know. 
Can anybody relate in here with that? We want to know. Ain't that a Joe song I want to know? I want to know. Who sings it? That's a Joe song. But let me tell you something, GET, and those who are watching, uh, uh, I got real fixed after reading this uh, passage of Scripture, this whole chapter, because I believe uh, God is letting his church know, and he wants us to understand clearly today that we don't need to know all the details. As long as we got the Holy Ghost, it does not matter what blindsides you. It does not matter what life brings. We are more than conquerors. I hear in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? In 2024, we must adopt the mindset that we can walk up boldly with the knowledge and the power that we have his spirit and we have his peace. There's a story about Jesus where he was on the Sea of Galilee with his disciples in and the winds was acting real crazy. They was really turning up that day. And the sea was going back and forth. And the disciples were scared. We heard this story before in Sunday school, we're in church. And, and it, sometimes it was given to us that we should never be afraid because Jesus was on the boat. But you got to understand, Jesus was not dead yet. So he was Jesus in the flesh. God, and, they, and, the, and, and the disciples really couldn't comprehend that he was Jesus a man and God. They was, they was having trouble really uh, understanding who they really had with them. But they went into a, a, a state of panic. And as they should, because after doing these studies, we find out that the Sea of Galilee uh, has a tendency to swallow up ships. This always happened when storms hit that particular uh, set of water there. And, and they knew, because you remember, some of them were fishermen, right? So they knew what was about to happen. So they went and uh, woke up Jesus. And Mark chapter 4, verse 39 tells us that Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great Calm. That word peace is a Greek word, siopao, which means to be silent, which means to be quiet. You see, they didn't know uh, uh, the sea and the winds did not also know and fathom who was on the boat. They didn't know that there was a man with all the power sitting there. And when Jesus told them to be quiet and to be silent, he was telling them to shut your mouth. You're not going to swallow up this boat because my people is on this boat so be quiet peace be still you know that's a good tool you can use in your life that's a good tool you can use within this walk with God but that's not the type of peace I'm going to introduce you today when we look into the Old Testament we find Hebrew words for peace such as karash which means to cut in engrave to be speechless we find uh, shalim which means peace offering or sacrificial offering we find the word shalim shalim which means safe and unharmed all of these are good words to put into your bag, but that's not the type of peace that I want to reintroduce you to you today. The type of peace we want to talk about and reintroduce to, to you today is in the text where Jesus said, this peace I give, the world cannot give to you. That word peace is a Greek word, El Rene, which means wholeness, rest, peace of mind, to join or bind together. What's been separated or divided? This type of peace is only granted to those who give their life to Jesus. This type of peace is a gift from God that was not designed to calm the storm, but to calm you and I so we can get through the storm with this peace that I want to reintroduce you today. Also, brings a responsibility and that responsibility that we have is that our soul says yes 
our soul says yes. We hear it yes to your will, yes to your way. But I'm here to confirm that it's a yes to his will, yes to his way. And if his will is that I have to suffer a little bit, if his will is that I have to have a pain, some type of hurt, some type of heartache, just a little bit, I'm going to say yes. Do we have anybody in the building today that's, that's going to say yes to his will? Do we have anybody that's going to say yes to his way? First Peter chapter 3, verse 11 Let's us know to turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. I'm a witness, and I have a strange feeling that I'm not by myself, that we understand it takes work not only to walk this walk of faith, but it takes work to maintain peace. The enemy does not want you to have peace, nor do the enemy want you to have any type of relaxation. All he wants you to do is be stressed out and heavy hearted, but that's why every morning we need to start off with the word of prayer, giving him thanks for another day giving him thanks that I have another chance to use your peace in my life. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, let us know, and I'm almost done. I got about five, five or ten minutes that says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Here's the shout. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything. We can't understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. We have to live in it. And the only way we can live in it is we invite him to live in us. Hallelujah. 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 Although Jesus is departing from his disciples temporarily, it's not the end. Jesus is going to return shortly and show himself. And the Bible says when he showed himself after he rose out of the grave, when he showed himself to the, his disciples, he didn't say praise the Lord. What he said is peace be unto you. Because Jesus knew the trauma and the hurt that his disciples had. And then imagine this. You know your Savior is dead. And then now he approaches you in the room. You walk in the room. Imagine walking in this room next Sunday and seeing Bishop Stewart in the pulpit. That will mess up your mind. I've been in the mortuary game going on 15 years, seen everything. But let a body that I picked up stand up as I walk into the room. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and I'm going to run fast, too, because I didn't lost some weight. So I'm going to be out of there. But even the peace of God can heal our mental state and bring us back into a spiritual mind. We need to understand that we as followers of Jesus, we must go through and endure some tough situations and some tough times. And if you... Look at it from a different angle. It's almost like Jesus wants us to suffer. He wants us to go through that hurt and pain. Which leads us to the point of the day. What doesn't challenge you 
doesn't grow you. John 16, 33 tells us, Jesus said, I have told you all of this that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrow, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Proverbs, listen, listen, listen. Before I hit this last scripture and I'm about to close, Jesus is doing this because he's a sweet God. He's doing it because he's a faithful God. He's faithful to us. And he's a sweet God. And a sweet God says sweet words. Proverbs 16.24, and in my closing, says, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy for the body. Listen, I want to tell you, I was at the barbershop the other week, and across from me was a little boy. And the little boy was getting his hair cut. It was his first cut. And he was in the barber chair. And the barber was just about done with his haircut. And the barber took a little napkin and poured some alcohol on the napkin and began to hit the little boy's edges so he won't break out with bumps. And the little boy started crying and yelling and screaming. And, and the little boy thought he was in danger. And uh, the barber stopped patting him and put the alcohol and the uh, towel down and opened up his drawer and pulled out a box of lollipops. And the little boy picked two red lollipops. I think he was from Inglewood. He picked up two red lollipops and opened up the lollipop and put the lollipop in his mouth. And the little boy stopped crying. And the barber began, began to pat him again on the back of his head and the little boy had the lollipop in his mouth but the little boy was not crying this time the little boy was not yelling this time so the mother said to the barber you sure have a way with kids and the barber said no ma'am but it's the sweetness of the candy that told the brain of the little boy that he's no longer in trouble. I'm here to tell you, G-E-T, storm clouds may rise and strong winds may blow, but I'm gonna tell the world wherever I go that I found a savior and he's sweet. I know I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus. We have a sweet savior who left us a sweet gift of peace. But what we got to do is learn to tap in the peace. We just look at the gift because the gift looks sweet. It's beautiful. But what happens when storms of life comes, we get hit on every side. But God said today, we're going to meet our peace. And you got to tap into the peace and step in. You got to minister in the peace. You got to sing in the peace. You got to play in your peace. You got to serve in your peace. And when it, gets, when it gets too rowdy, when the ship starts shaking, hold on to your peace. Marinate in your peace. For if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, victory shall be mine. If you have the victory, take 30 seconds and blow the roof off this church. Come on and praise him. Praise him for your peace. Praise him for your faith. Praise him for your love. Praise him for Jesus. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Hold on to your peace. Hold on to your peace. Hold on to your peace. Let's 
be upstanding. Let's be upstanding. report whose report will you believe today we met peace we're meeting peace we're meeting love we're meeting faith and we're meeting Jesus but I got one question for you what's your ETA are you gonna wait until you walk out them doors? Are you gonna wait until the benediction, the benediction and the prayer? Are you gonna wait until the battle is over? Or are you gonna shout now? Are you gonna praise now? Are you gonna thank him now? Are you gonna worship him now? Listen, in this final word before we call the altar call, Open up the altar call. Jesus says in verse 14, he closes out this chapter. Listen and read this. Get this in your spirit. Jesus says, I don't have more. I don't have much time more to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. Jesus says this. He's a real gangster right here. He says, he has no power over me, but... I will do whatever the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. And this is where we know he's in this service. Look what Jesus says. He says, come, let's be going. Where are we going? We're going to meet peace. We're going to meet love. We're going to meet faith. And we're going to meet Jesus again. What a powerful and exceptional message we just heard. If you would like, share your prayer request at the email below. Our pastor and prayer team would be glad to pray for you. And we expect God to do amazing things. Have a blessed week. Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us today in the Announcements Corner. This is the spot to get updated. If this is your first time, welcome to GET. Bienvenidos. Stay tuned for all the upcoming events happening here at GET. You can find five ways to give right at the bottom of the screen. Help us to continue to spread the work and be a blessing to God's people. Bible Study 2024 is the place to be. Join us for your midweek dive into the Word. We'll see you this Wednesday at 7 p.m. The GET Man Cave will host the Redrick Lejean Nicholas Williams Scholarship's second annual bowling fundraiser. That's February the 17th, 1 to 3 p.m. at the Del Rio Lanes at 7502 Florence Avenue in Downey. Come out, showcase those skills, and enjoy a night out. The cost is $50 per person. That includes two hours of bowling, shoe rental, pizza, soft drink. We encourage donors who will not be bowling but want to give towards the cause, please feel free or sponsor a young bowler. The proceeds will go to the scholarship fund. Please contact the RSVP Deacon Marvin at 310-413-4729. We'll see you there. In 2023, GET launched our Tuesday Food 
giveaways. We were such a blessing and we were able to serve the community throughout the entire year due to a team of successful, committed, and dedicated volunteer team members. On Sunday, February 18th at 1 p.m., we will have our appreciation brunch where we'll highlight our dedicated team members who work tirelessly throughout the year. Get your tickets today and we'll see you there. Thanks again for joining us today. We are so happy you made this your place of worship. Wishing you and your family a fantastic 2024. As our pastor always says, love God, love people, and love yourself.